Hello everyone, Denise Carpenter from lotuswings.ca and reikiassociates.com here. We're going to continue on with the playlist Conversations with Denise. And today I'm joined by Mo or Monique Rostayas <laughs> of Momentous Reiki. And uh, we had talked in an earlier video uh, that Mo and I had done about chakras for animals. And Mo has agreed to come in today and give us kind of a mini lesson around um, chakras for animals. So I guess the very first question I have to ask Mo is, is are they the same as chakras for people? Um, they are the same, but there's a few more that they have that we don't. Ah. Yeah, so this is Harry. I like to do my distant stuff with Harry here. Um, and we like to start off with, they have something called brachial chakras. Oh. So it's right at like where the shoulder joint is on either side. Yeah. And um, it's kind of a very non-aggressive, less mm. evasive place to start on an animal. You know, they don't like really being touched by the head or things like that. So um, often my dog will come up and be yeah. like, touch my back, it's that kind of thing. Okay. So, so, so is that like <clears throat> the throat chakra? No, or that's where extra sh chakras? Extra, yeah. Okay. So they, they're right at the shoulder joint. Oh, I love and, that. Yeah. And, and, um, and the same for all animals? Yeah. Have that? And then, so if you're approaching an animal, rather than, because we often want to feel <clears throat> their heads, right? Mm -hmm. And scratch their ears, because that feels so nice yeah, to us, us. But yes. I don't know about the dog, the animal. So is it better to approach there, like um, on the if, shoulder, if you can? It's better to put your hand out and let them decide to come up and sniff oh, you. And okay. you, they would prefer under here, it's worse, uh, it's better than being on top okay. of the head. Okay. But often they don't mind it if you reach down and touch their shoulder. It depends on the animal. Yeah in the day okay but yeah so we start off with those yeah and then it works the same way like solar plexus sacral and your root but they also like to have their tail oh like you too as well you can't forget the tail it's kind of like part of the grounding process but also completing oh. you know for this so i know that once when i um i was raking a horse it was very evident that she was having some emotional problems because when I got to her sacral, everything just came rushing in. Okay. And so we worked on releasing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's often, I find that once they understand what I'm doing, and they settle in, they'll show me where they want me to go. Awesome. They'll give me their hind end, they'll yeah. give me their back. Yeah. And it's not just about the chakras, it's about the pain too, but whatever yeah. energy they need. Yeah. And it comes, it releases so well because they don't judge what's going on. Mm -hmm. They can sense it. Um, energy work, Reiki, chakras, that's their, their language. That's yeah. how they do things, yeah. right? So they get it that, okay, this can help me. Yes. Um, and then we move up. We So we have the throat. We have the heart, which you can access. Okay. I like to access it by the chest if yeah. they allow me, but by the side as well. Okay. And then the throat. Mm -hmm. And... Usually I try not to like put my whole hand around, but they they will lay gently into my hand yeah, often. Awesome. And then they have their crown. But they also have a chakra on the end of their nose, which no. is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you ever touch, try to touch a dog's nose, but they'll pull away really yeah. fast. So it's it's pretty sensitive spot for them. And they have many olfactory senses, so they can yeah. smell so many things. And, and, yes. And then they also have chakras at their ears, usually right at oh, the front that's of why, Is that why that feels so nice? <laughs> to us? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And probably to them too. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do oh, my love. Goodness. That is a very relaxing thing okay. for a dog. I also like to, with my older dog, I um, like to rub his head all it, the way through. So would they have a third eye, like an intuitive they do. chakra? They do have yeah. a third eye, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then they also have ones on their paws. Oh. And those are called buds. Buds. And I just think that's the sweetest thing oh, in the world. Oh, yes. Call them buds. Oh, my gosh. Um, they're like a sensory thing. They're what keeps them grounded. Okay. So I have reiki paws before on someone who had sensitive paws. Yeah. And he didn't really enjoy it first, so I clearly I did it from a distance. But then he came over once and just plopped his paw into mine. This was a dog. And it was like fireworks were going off. Wow. He was just releasing and releasing and releasing yeah. a ton of stuff. And um, if once um, cats love to put their paw in my hand yes. and just come in, it's like they plug into me. Exactly. Just lie down and be like, yes, yeah. yes, I like this. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, they're very sensitive animals. I, 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 animal, all animals are, um, they should be given the respect that, you know, they have emotions and feelings as yeah. well, and they get things just as stuck as we do. And, Memories. And would they pick up on our stuff? Like would their Absolutely. chakras kind of resonate with our chakras? Um, they definitely can. So okay. they're here for many different reasons. If you're in a bad mood and you're walking your dog, they might act <laughs> out. Um, or they <laughs> might get really whiny. They can definitely resonate with what you're feeling. And then they can try to help. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you were sad, like mm -hmm. when my mother passed, yeah. my dog came over. He would not leave my side for 10 days. Beautiful. He had his paw on me all the time, but yeah. they are trying to help you release the emotions that you need to release as yeah. well. Yeah. They're here to help us yeah. and to work with us. And they can have their own emotions, but they definitely feed off yours. Okay. Okay, and I notice my cats, depending on, I have two cats and the way my day's gone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're all over me when I get home, purring. Yes. And then other times they just ignore me. <laughs> like, just feed me and get out of my way kind of thing. Right. So, to, yeah. yeah, I have a friend who said when she's in a bad mood, her dog just completely ignores her. It's oh, like, okay. acts like she's not even there. Yeah. And I have one of my dogs that's like that, and the other dog is just on me because he wants to help. Okay. Yeah. So, they can, they, so they would have those same... Kind of traits that people have absolutely they do they have so. chakras that all mean the same things yeah. as us these are more grounding these are all about their sensitivities because they're yeah. much more energetically aware on frequencies and vibrations that's yes. how they speak interspecies yeah way and and mm -hmm. um so they can absorb our um they can even absorb our ailments so mm -hmm. you might find that if you're stomach have stomach issues then your dog might develop them yes things yeah. like that mm -hmm. and so they're here to help us and sometimes they're here to show us different things that we need to pay attention to that they might be blind to in our lives for we, ourselves then. yeah Ooh. yeah so they communicate with us in all sorts of different ways okay um they definitely have the same emotions that we can have and they have memories mm -hmm. um that sometimes they need to let go of just as much as we do. Mm -hmm. And that's why things like raking for rescue animals is very helpful to help yes. them transition and be less scared yeah. from going from a shelter to a home yeah. and realizing that it's not necessarily the same place that they came from if something yeah. was a little more violent or upsetting to them yeah. or you know, being taken away from their mamas. I know yeah. that when I... Um, got my last dog I actually met the mom and I asked her if I could take him with me and she put her paw on my um foot oh, that's such a good idea yeah because and then she can release the puppy to you as well so the puppy's not feeling his mother the the, the mother anxiety as well as their own anxiety about the separation exactly so that's such a good they idea they can hold these kinds of things in them and they're just like us yeah they um, they just don't speak the same language as in the spoken word, mm -hmm. but they can show us so much. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they have the, the, the need to express themselves just as much as we do. And I just kind of was thinking, you mentioned, um, so if your dog or cat or whatever the, the companion animal is, is transitioning, mm -hmm. you mentioned about when your mom passed, your dog was right there with you. Now, how about when they go? Oh my gosh, it is so important for us to be with them um, when they go so that they can release that energy so that yeah. they can, they're just here to love you and they're here to support you. So mm -hmm. they want you to be there so that it's um, smooth and they feel loved and they can carry on. And I've had, I have a friend who, she had uh, put her dog down a couple of years ago and she said she felt him go through her. Oh. And I'm like, absolutely, you yeah. did. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would rather, I have an older dog that's not doing very well and I would rather have him with me than mm -hmm. die on an operating table by himself oh, yeah. or, yeah. you know, for us to be together when the moment has to happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, often we can hang on to them when it's time to go and then they feel bad 
Um, so they stick around longer oh. because they're doing it for you. Exactly. Even though they want to go. Yeah. So Reiki is really good at releasing all of those things okay. and, and maybe getting that across that it's okay. I'm still going to be with you all the time. Yeah. I'm going to love you. But um, they might hang out a little longer. So okay. we have to be more aware of those kinds of things too. Wonderful. Now you've really been using the last year or so of your practice to do more studies around um, Reiki and animals. And then I, I just noticed a little bit around animal communicator, like you are, are you branching out into that a bit as yeah, well? Yeah, I actually took an interspecies communication course first. Oh, wow. And <clears throat> I learned so much. Um, one of the things is, the biggest thing that I learned, I mm -hmm. think, was we expect animals to go to our level to communicate, but we should, like, let them communicate with us we should give them the space and be on the same frequency for them to do yeah. that so you know like sometimes you're like come here do this do it now that's not their speed they have to suss it out first <coughs> that's mm -hmm. an instinct for them so you have to give them the time to relax mm -hmm. and to trust and to be able to do their thing so it may take longer than we want it to take because we have <laughs> schedules. Yeah. They don't care. They don't care. No. Yeah. It's how they do things. Mm -hmm. um, timid dogs are not going to come at you if come to you if you come at them. Yeah. Um, these are all things that we've noticed before. But yeah, communicating is not only um, being like a sensitive or even understanding everything that they do, it's just being open for them to communicate with mm -hmm. you and it'll come through. And there's a lot of things that they can do that, like I said earlier, might irritate us, but they're trying to show us something. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things other than sleep that they do is actually to help us with our own journeys yeah. or to express who they are or what they can do. Mm -hmm. There are some dogs that are working dogs mm -hmm. and some dogs need to be working dogs and if they're not yes. they get really depressed. Yeah. You know, um if other animals die and they don't have the time to be able to oh. go over and smell that they're gone yes. and give that kind of um understanding between mm -hmm. the souls, then they get upset and are depressed yeah. and then yeah. that can affect them too. Yeah. So I guess we have to let the animal be be an animal. We so <clears throat> often want to humanize or humanize the animal or humanize their experience with us. And I guess what you're saying is we need to really let them be who they are. Exactly. As well. Um, my dog barked at someone in my neighborhood and he's like, why does your dog always do that? And I said, I've never asked him. And he said, well, can't you make him stop? And I said, I can't make him change how he feels. Mm -hmm. It's like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. No. I have no control over what he feels. Yeah. And if he doesn't like you, then he doesn't like you. And I'm not going to let him hurt you. But yeah. at the same time, <clears throat> I'm not going to do anything about it. Yeah. I'm just going to let him be. And I will talk to him. And if he wants to be different about it, that's fine. And I do find with Animal Reiki, I have a dog that's a little more protective because of things that happened when he was little. Okay. He's more protective of me because mm -hmm. he's a little more timid, actually. It's mm -hmm. a fear aggression kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he's not overly aggressive other than barking. Mm -hmm. But when I Reiki him, he's able to release things. And for the next few days after I Reiki, have a good release with him. He is non-confrontational. Wow. He doesn't bark at anybody. He sits. He's calm. And it just completely changes his demeanor. Wonderful. Yeah. He's just less scared. Yeah. Because he let it go. Yeah. So if people would like to book a session with you, how would we? How would they go about doing that? Uh, you could go to my website, mm -hmm. uh, which is www.momentousreiki.ca. That's M-O-M-E-N-T-O-U-S-R-E-I-K-I. Mm -hmm. and uh, go on there and you can contact me through that mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can work it out I have all my prices and how it all works there yeah so. just gonna say do you do individual or is a package mm -hmm. or do you have both I have both okay so yeah. if you just wanted to try it for sure yeah. individual is yeah. great yeah. and um, I do have packages because I find that if I do four sessions in a row mm -hmm. and then a week later they really have time to get to know me, understand mm -hmm. what's going on, and then release everything. Wonderful. Um, and then you kind of do like a little tune-up and go mm -hmm. from there. Um, I also do distant 
and I usually do those in the evening and I send you an email afterwards telling you anything that I noticed and then you can keep an eye on your dog and tell me mm -hmm. um, if you've noticed anything as well. Often there's subtle changes or even more dramatic changes that happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then that helps me work towards what we're going for because I don't always know what I'm walking into. Yeah, that's true. To the animal. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I can do those in person or distantly. And mm -hmm. then with dogs that are shyer or more aggressive or anything like that, distance is usually the good way to go because they don't want necessarily a stranger to mm -hmm. touch them. And sometimes they're just too shy. One of my my own animals does not like hands-on Reiki. Okay. He likes me to be in the tomb, so I do. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now, I'd, I'd really like to explore the, the whole concept of animal communication. So would you come back and do Absolutely. another one with us? Yeah, and sure. uh, and we'll just chat some more about that. That'd be great. So thank you for coming in today, Mo. As always, it's fascinating to learn more and more about our, our animal companions and how we can be better, how we can be more respectful of them. And really, as we do, we probably enjoy their company even more. Absolutely. And they enjoy our company oh, even more. Oh, the bond more. will get stronger for yeah. sure. Yeah. Wonderful. So Mo Rostias from Momentous Reiki. Mm -hmm. uh, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. And we will see you another time. Uh, namaste.